In this video, we're going to take a look at something really important when you're working with an Oracle database, and that's something called a join. And as usual, my handwriting is hideous. Let's start this over again. And we're going to keep it pretty simple now. But there's a lot of really complex and interesting things that you can do with a join. And a join is simply the process of pulling information from more than one Oracle object at the same time. Usually you're going to pull information from two different tables at the same time. You may pull something from one table and a view. You may pull information from three or four objects simultaneously. Uh, you can certainly pull information from um, you know, 15 or 20 different tables simultaneously. If you're starting to get to the point where you're pulling information from that many different tables, you probably need to look at your database design and figure out uh, a little better way of, of setting it up so that you don't have to do that many joins. But uh, under real simple circumstances, we'll pull information from, let's say, two different tables simultaneously. Why would we ever have to pull information from two different tables simultaneously? Well, the whole thing goes into this concept of normalization. And normalization is really just a way of saying we want to try to eliminate as much redundancy in our database as, as we possibly can. So as part of normalization, what we're going to do is we're going to break out the information into different tables and store it that way. And that's part of what's considered to be good database design. But when it comes time for us to get the information back out, we're obviously going to have to do these joins to pull the information from different tables. So let's say I have this table called employees. And as part of my employee table, one of the columns inside my employee table is department. So I could store the department as is. You know, I might have a department as, you know, VP. I might have another one as finance. I might have another one as uh, retail. I might have all of these different departments that are out there. And I may just store it this way. But if I choose to store it this way inside my employee table, let me put a little box around this to show that this is my employee table here. If I choose to store it this way, um, there's a couple of issues that I could run into. One is consistency of data. Uh, I might have a data entry program where, as I'm entering new employees, not everybody calls the finance department finance. We might have somebody who inputs it as, you know, Finn. Uh, maybe somebody who breaks out, you know, vice president as, you know, executive department. So I have this issue of, of data consistency, uh, making sure that the right data is going into my tables. I also don't want to store too many character strings over and over again. Uh, as part of my retail operations, I might have, you know, 10,000 employees. And I'm going to store all of that information, retail, 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 the word retail, over and over again, you know, 10,000 times. It's much more efficient for Oracle to store a number than it is to store text. So this might be department 30. So it's much more efficient for me to, uh, to store 30 10,000 times than it is to uh, store the word retail 10,000 times. It also makes it a lot easier for me to search. Um, I might have somebody who puts in retail with a capital R. I might have somebody else who puts it in with a small r. Uh, as far as Oracle is concerned, those are two completely different departments. So then I'd have to tailor my queries to say, OK, I want it retail. I want somebody else who might put everything in, capital letters. So I'm going to have to tailor my query on my report to find you know, retail with a capital R, retail with a small r, retail with all capital letters. It's much more efficient for me to store a number that's associated with that particular department. So I might break this department out into its own table. And again, I'm going to put a box around it here to, set, to show that it's a table. And I might have you know 10 is my executive department, 20 is my finance department, and 30 is my retail department. So if I break that out, and again, this is a concept called normalization, where we're breaking out redundant data so that we don't have it over and over again inside of our database. Uh, if I break this out into its own table, uh, I'm simply storing the numbers, and it makes it a lot easier for me to make sure that the information is consistent, that I'm not storing uh, a lot of extra character data that I don't want to. 
But when it comes time for me to query this information, if I query information from the uh, employee table and I have this on a report, I'm going to see stuff like 30s and 20s and 10s and, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see, finance is also 20 and ex retail is 30. So I'm going to see all of these numbers over and over again. And for the person running the report or seeing it on a screen, that might not mean, mean anything to them. You know, what does 30 mean? It doesn't mean anything to that particular user. So I want to write a query that pulls all of the information from the employee department, but when it comes time for me to actually um, query their department ID, I don't want to query the number. I want to use this number to join over to this other table and I want to actually display finance. I don't want to display the, the number 20. I want to display the number finance. So the only way we can do that from two different tables is to write a join. And we're going to hop into SQL Plus, our SQL Developer here, and show how to do that. So here's my HR schema, and this is created if you select the uh, in Install Sample Schemas checkbox when you're using the Database Configuration Assistant to create your database. And you can see that I have employees and I also have this department. So if I look at employees and I scroll all the way over to the right, you can see that each employee is associated with a department ID. And again, I can write a query and write a report that pulls back this information. But again, this may not be, have meaningful information for me. 60 doesn't mean anything to somebody reading the report. <coughs> Excuse me. What I really want to do is I want to go over to Departments, and instead of pulling back 60, I want to pull back IT. Instead of pulling back 30, I want to pull back Purchasing. So how do I write a query to, to do that? So let's say I want to pull back for my employees uh, last name, first name, phone number, and department. Let's say I'm just going to pick that as an example. So I'm going to start off by saying select and we can get all of the employee information here. So last name, first name, phone number, and department from hr.employees. I run that. Query comes back. Oh, I got an invalid identifier. It's not department. It's what? It's department ID. So let's fix that guy. Run the information. <laughs> phone number isn't right. What is it? It's phone number. Okay. We'll get there. All right, so now we have last name, first name, phone number, department ID. But again, this doesn't mean anything, department ID, we want to get out of there. So what do we have to do? Well, we obviously are going to pull this information from two tables. So the first part we have to do is go to our from statement and say that we want to actually pull this from two tables. So we want to pull this from HR employees and we want to pull this from HR departments. We know that. We also know that we don't want to display department ID, we want to display department name. So let's go back to our query here and we're going to change department ID to department name. So we're getting close. So we're going to get last name, first name, phone number, and since all of these columns are unique, Oracle knows how to associate each one of these with each one of the tables that we're talking about. If we wanted to be doubly sure that uh, we were pulling the information from the right tables, what we can do is we can give each one of these tables an alias. So I'm going to give HR employees a an alias of EMP, and I'm going to give HR departments an alias of DEPT. And then we can go through and preface each one of the column names with our alias. So I'm going to say this is from emp.lastname, emp.firstname, emp.phonenumber, and then department.departmentID. And I'm just going to format this a little differently so it's a little easier to read. So we're pulling three of the columns from one table, one of the columns from a different table. If we try to run this, it's not going to give us the response that we're looking for. So I'm going to run this the way it is now. Pull back information. We get all of these different things. but we have way too many rows. We got 1900 rows 
and it just keeps on going and going and going and going and going. 2,700 rows, 20, 20, 2,889 rows. So we know that's not that can't be accurate because we don't have that many employees. If we go to employees and we look at the data, and we scroll all the way down to the end of our employees, we only have 107 employees. So how could our query possibly return 2,889 rows? Well, we don't have any join criteria here. So what Oracle did was it just joined everybody with all the departments. So every single employee got joined to every single department. And we had what's called a Cartesian join, which basically says we're going to just multiply everything together. And that's how we came back with 2,889 rows. What we have to do is we have to say the criteria for oh, how we're going to join these two tables together. What's that criteria going to be? Well, it's going to be in our WHERE clause. And what we're going to say is where AMP dot department, whoops, if I can spell it right, ID is equal to department, department underscore ID. So we're looking at the employees table, and we're going to take this department ID here. So for this user, the first employee that we have in our system, um, he or she is part of department 90. And what we're going to do is we're going to join it to departments, department ID 90, and we're going to return just that department name there, executive. Now that we have all of the criteria together, we have all the different columns that we want to see on our reports. We have the two different tables that we're going to pull information from. And then we have the criteria and how we're going to join that information together. If we run this again, this time we come back with the correct number of employees. We got 106. How many employees do we have here? Scroll all the way down. We've got 107. So there must be an employee here who doesn't have a department ID. Let's take a look and see if we can find somebody who doesn't have a department ID. As you can see, there's that one employee who's got a null value as their department ID, so they didn't get joined to anything, so they didn't get returned. So out of the 107 employees, we got 106 back. And again, instead of showing the information with the department ID, we're actually pulling back meaningful information where we're pulling back uh, the department name instead of the ID. So this is an example of how to use a real simple join to gather information from more than one Oracle object simultaneously. Uh, we, we're not limited to two. We can pull information from tables and views. We can pull information from three, four, five, 15 different tables and views combined together. And in some organizations, you'll come across code that actually has to pull information from all of those different pieces because they have really complex systems. And um, you know that's the only way to satisfy the query for whatever the, uh, the report or the application is looking for. Again, if you're joining things from you know, more than eight or nine tables and views simultaneously, you probably need to look at your database design and probably look at maybe changing some things around inside your database. Uh, writing a query to pull information from that many objects simultaneously is usually not a good idea. But uh, it certainly is possible using the um, Oracle uh, the SQL language and the Oracle database. So this hopefully gives you a basic understanding of how joins work. We're going to look at some really cool features of joins in an advanced video coming up real soon.